All right, welcome back to the Seven Deadly Sins anime review episode number fifty-three. This one viewing the ninety-ninth episode of the series of the Seven Deadly Sins: An Everlasting Kingdom. Of course, this comes from the fourth and final season of the show. Now, this is the pentagon episode of the series. Why do I say that? Because next one is the last one. Why is that? Because the last one is going to cover the last two chapters of the series, the epilogue arc. This one covers the last three chapters of the chaos arc. Now, I knew when the anime was going to adapt this arc, per se, that I kind of thought, though, that this arc would probably take about two to three episodes. Given how the fact this arc is really short. And I was right. Yep, it took three episodes. So we start off with basically... Before we get to the... We left out a cliffhanger in the ending last week's episode. We start off with the seven deadly sins. Minus Merlin and Eskinor, who actually died at the end of the previous arc. So, they basically... Gothor is having a discussion with everybody where everybody's had all the wishes granted. So, let's go... Let's go help Merlin. Yeah, it doesn't last very long, and then they go get to go help Merlin. Then, of course, Merlin let's take on Koth, Koth Plug. This lasts for a good chunk of time, and of course, the fighting back and forth. Arthur basically fights his damn thing by slicing it up, and <clears throat> then Koth unleashes a bunch of energy at Merlin, and then we have a bit of a reversal from like. Like, I'm glad the fact they actually didn't spoil the surprise that this was, in fact, Meliodas. Where you have, basically, from, you see his shoes. You don't see his, it's not like camera off his face. Basically, his shoes run up and do full counter fire right back at... Right back at Koth. And everybody gets a chance to all those shots on him. And then it appears they defeat Koth by freezing him. It's like, oh yeah, we'll finish up a dozen years, maybe centuries. Yeah. And then we sort of have a sort of a time skip. Where we see the wedding of Elizabeth and Melionis. This will eventually do happen, yes. But... Hmm. Then of course, well... You probably think, okay, what happens next? Well, they mentioned, oh yeah, they mentioned right now where can make it due to the fact, well, King and Deanne basically go back to the fairy realm. Elaine finds no one has me near Elaine because near her baby. This actually, some of the stuff basically you do mention does in fact come true. It does hint to stuff basically we've seen in the last two chapters of the series. I mentioned Gother and Hawk are doing their own thing. Which seems quite odd, given Gother. Why the heck are these two don't think? I have no idea. So, then we have another time skip. This time about, I'd say about 50 years later, I'd say. Elizabeth looks like an old lady and she dies peacefully in her bed. And then, Kath comes back. And looks like they're about to fight. And then, then we exit this thing. And it turns out that was all just an illusion. A lot of big hallucination. And apparently the only person who notices that side familiar was Arthur. Yes, Arthur. Everyone was basically in a trance. So they need to figure out a way to beat And of course, then we... And Arthur figures out, though, because he's bragging. Oh, yeah, by the way, before all this, before everybody shows up, Cap does show exactly... Does give... Arthur time to look at his kingdom for what using the power of chaos. Now they don't show the flashback to the demon king per se, because they mentioned oh yeah the the camel was destroyed during a battle between the, the seven deadly sins and the demon king. Well, mostly it was the demon king who destroyed the kingdom. It was basically a result of their battle with them, yes, but with his power who destroyed the kingdom. They mentioned oh yeah m most citizens are evacuated already, and okay then what, what about the people in the underground? Don't know about them. Yeah, I don't know what happened to them. They may have gone out. I have no idea. So, then after that, then somebody else shows up. And eventually, Arthur comes up with the ingenious idea. To 
to because Kath keeps bragging, oh yeah, I'm going to eat you, I'm going to eat you, put you in my belly. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to eat you and get back my power. So, summons this sort of this giant mouth with a tongue and absorbs Kath right into himself. And then he gets a new sword, and of course Kath is basically gone, basically inside of himself. Excuse me. He says he doesn't know where. Of course, he mentioned in his conversation with him that he wants to create an everlasting kingdom. That's what he wants to do. That's the title of the episode. And he's like, huh, that's stupid. And, of course, then later on, after Kath is defeated, Melo's like, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll help you with that. And that's where the episode ends. It's a pretty good episode. It does wrap up this arc, per se. The arc itself was interesting at best. Now it's like, let's say... You can kind of say, I mean, some of you could say this arc was a bit unnecessary because it kind of, in a way, already wrapped up pretty much the whole series with the Demon King arc. Yeah, because Demon King arc was just an addition to the series itself. If it was went once I was finished up, the series should have been over at that point. The Chaos arc was basically a bonus, per se. But the neat thing about this arc, per se, is that it did have some build as far back as the Raven's arc. Yep. But despite the fact this book, this one had build, but at least they wrapped up a loose end before the series ended because I'm sure that the writer of the series really wanted to end it. And he did. Basically, this arc was meant to wrap up because if you look at it, everything related to the series is already all wrapped up with the Demon King arc, per se. And and this one feels like just a, just another arc that basically has nothing to do with demons, per se. It's mostly something that's been mildly mentioned here and there. It has some build to it, but at least it's something basically that, be, that the writers probably had to do. Because it left the plot there with Arthur hanging. Like, thinking like, this is not the end for Arthur. And he probably felt as though he needed to do this arc. And it's not that bad of an arc, per se. It's just an arc that's, well, not exactly there, per se. But if you're fan of King Arthur lore, you would definitely love this arc, per se. You would, you would, you would, you would love this arc overall. It's only three episodes. It's by far, in the anime, with the exception of the intro stuff, it's by far the quickest arc to get through. It's only three episodes, and, like, that's it. Yep, and next week is the epilogue, which is also the 100th episode of the series. That should be quite interesting to discuss, that one. And you probably think, okay, what was the last series you've been reviewing that actually ended? The last one I could think of that did that to me, where actually it ended? Hmm. I think, like, the last official one that happened, I could think of, that I have been reviewing for a while... Well, could be, last one I could think of was probably Black Clover. Yeah, that was the last one, but at least that one. That one didn't finish adapting the series. This one did. I would say probably the last official one this happened was probably Tokyo Reed. That was probably the last official one, though this was about three years ago. That was the last one I could think of, per se. That ended where I could have viewed the, the series finale of what happened. Yeah, it's the first, and by far, it was the first, it was the second one that happened. The last this happened was with Naruto Spruden, where I managed to watch my episode when it aired. Oh yeah, there is actually one other series, this, this happened after Tokuguri. Fairy Tale. Yep, this happened Fairy Tale too. So Fairy Tale, that one was my last one. But in the case Fairy Tale, they did adapt the ending of the series. At least Fairy Tale has a faithful adaptation of the manga compared to, let's say, Tokyo Re, where it rushed it. Yep, but it is great, though, that Seven Daily Saints get a chance to finish adapting its arc, per se. But I will do a bonus episode along with the final episode of the series to get my final thoughts overall on the entire series. That'll be episode number 55. 54 will cover the final episode of the series. 55 will be the final one final thoughts of the series the reason i want to do 55 is because 56 is going to be when it comes out our view of the movie 
week's second movie, which probably be my last thing I'll discuss for this series. Mm -hmm. Yep. But see you soon next video, which will be tomorrow. And the only video coming tomorrow that I could think of was, I could think of was probably just going to be Shaman King, and that's pretty much it. Because I got no, the only video I might have tomorrow is maybe Comic Corner. Or probably to live with darkness. It depends. Okay. Next video. Bye.